Hello, gorgeous goddesses. Hello. Happy one o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. So just so you know, I'm trying to become more consistent showing up for Facebook Lives and delivering content for you, uh, serving you. And I'm trying to figure out the best times to kind of catch you live if possible or when it's when it's really most convenient. So right now I'm going to be rolling with 1 o'clock Eastern on Wednesdays and see how that goes for a little bit. I'm really excited about today's topic because it's about um, goddess lifestyle practices for ease, peace, and flow. Who does not want that, right? <laughs> There's been so many years that I had, you know, being an overthinker, a chronic overthinker, I have a lot of air in my chart and, and you know, I, my, my head, it could be a prison for a lot of women, uh, this, this space in between our or ears, right? It could really be a prison or it could be a place where you really feel a lot of grace, a lot of peace, a lot of flow. There, there's definitely um, strategies and modalities, holistic modalities you could be utilizing to help um, strengthen that muscle for, for grace and flow. Being in flow is an interesting topic for me because it's about flowing with what is, you know? It's that element of water it's, it, it has a lot to do with how we show up when we, if we ask for help, if we accept what is, and just flowing with what is. So today, I wanted to talk to you about some practical um, strategies, really, and practices you can add to your life. Now, years ago, when I developed the Goddess Lifestyle Plan, and I developed my signature process, which is Goddess Lifestyle Alchemy, I identified 12 key areas of a woman's life. You know, we, we have these 12 key areas, and because I believe we're holistic creatures, when one of those areas are not really um, performing or bringing us the satisfaction level that we want, you know, in one key area, whether it's, let's just say it's relationships, I find that all the other key areas suffer. You know, we're holistic creatures, especially women. Men are kind of wired to uh, compartmentalize, and they're really good at it. But women, I have found, and I'll speak for myself too, you know, when I'm upset about something or something's not feeling great in one key area of my life, it kind of affects my overall happiness level, my overall peace uh, of mind, the way that I feel grace-filled. It could kind of affect that. So Goddess Lifestyle Alchemy, my, my signature process, is so helpful for myself, for thousands of women at this point who have who have utilized um, the system to really get in front of those their key areas, right? We raise the vibration, we raise the amount of um, tending uh, of the garden, so to speak, of each of those key areas. And what happens is you feel really good. You feel really good, and life feels very grace filled. So today, let's talk about. Let's talk about some strategies for you. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm overthinking. I have my notes here, so I wanna make sure I get everything in. You know, if you know me, I gotta just, I have to have it all. So if you're joining me live, I'd love to hear where you're joining me from. I love to hear, you know, just give me a hey, give me some hearts, let me know you're here. I really love to know when when I have some um, some women here with me live. If you're watching this on replay, I'd love for you to tell me replay and let me know where you're watching from. And it's just a fun thing for me. It's, it's a nice thing you could do for me. I always love it, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna say that was an essential thing um, for me was connecting with Source every day. I never did that growing up. I was always looking outside. Hi, Fia, how are you? How are you, darling? Nice to see you. Thank you for joining me live. Um, I never collect, connected with Source. I was always so busy uh, being outside of myself. Figure I was either worried about something that might have been coming down the turnpike or I was like stressing out over something I might have done that was a mistake. I'm perfectionistic by nature. I've had to work with all of these challenges. And I call them challenges because perfectionism is a challenge. When you're a perfectionist, nothing ever seems good enough. Nothing ever seems right enough. Uh, it could have been done better. It's it's like really, it's like post-mortem, like, like you overthink everything. 
um, to the point where you torture yourself, right? This, this mind of ours, can it could be heaven or hell in there. And a lot of my life, it was hell because I was always thinking and, and, and spreading my energy outward, out of me. And when I made the decision, you know, when I finally woke up to the fact that I'm just not happy in my life in my late thirties, how did I end up here? You know, how did, how did this turn out to be my life? I, it's, it's not where I want to be. It's not how I want to feel. Is this all that I have for the, the rest of my life? And then I, you know, that was, that really started me thinking, I was like, there has to be a better way. And I, in that moment, you know, these moments of clarity, these moments of like really getting these divine downloads, like Lisa, wake up, wake up, go inward. The answers are not out there. The answers are inside of yourself. So part of that practice or process for me was starting to get quiet. Everything was so loud all the time. Everything out there was loud and, and it was distracting and then made me like more crazy, too many, too much in going in for me to process right all the external so part of that when i when i said no i have to quiet my mind i have to quiet what's going on in there so i could hear that that whispering voice of the divine some of you might call it intuition i call it source or the divine i truly believe that all paths lead to one so whether your higher power is jesus or goddess or god or whomever nature it's all good because that's the quiet voice our inner compass is that connection to the divine. So connecting with source kind of strengthens that muscle because it's a very, very faint whisper, you know, when the divine speaks to you and wants to give you guidance. And if you have too much mind clutter and too much external noise being allowed let in the head of yours, you're going to not hear that small voice. You're just going to keep hearing the loud noise from outside. And there's a big difference. So for me, starting a prayer practice um, every day was really essential in me getting quiet. It, it built my, my faith muscle. It built the muscle where I was starting to be able to hear divine guidance. And because I was starting to push out the external noise and the mental chatter. So for me, it looks like, honestly, just, just grounding and centering in the morning, calling in the elements giving myself over to the divine. It's really that simple. You know, part of one of the reasons that um, it took me so long to um, really embrace teaching about magical living, teaching about goddess study, is because I didn't want to do it wrong, right? That perfectionism came in. But what I've, what I've learned is that the gods have a sense of humor, and it's really your intention that matters. It's not that you call in the elements perfectly. It's not that you talk to the talk to deity perfectly. They really understand your heart, your intention. So it could be the simplest prayer. Mine is very simply, um, excuse me, my phone is talking to me. Um, it's my assistant. Thank you, Tammy, if you're watching. I got it. Oh, okay. No, she she didn't. So anyway, it's about honestly just, for me, it's this simple. I just ground and center. I place my hands over my heart. I put them in prayer hands, whatever it looks like for you. Simple. And I just say, Holy Divine, use me today. Use me to be of service. Use all of my talents, all of my gifts to be of service to the women that I'm meant to touch, the women I'm meant to help. It could start like that if you're an entrepreneur. Honestly, if you're not an entrepreneur, which, you know, I really wish you were because I think all women have their gifts, skills, talents that they can monetize, but that's a whole nother thing. If you're not entrepreneurial, okay, just give your life over to the divine to be of service to the people in your life, the people you touch, friends, strangers, family. It's such a beautiful practice and it gets you quiet and it gets you connected to something bigger than yourself. So that's, that's strategy and, and practice number one. Number two is feel your decisions. Airy women, perfectionistic women, overthinking women, they don't feel their decisions. They try to think their decisions. And yes, I'm a strategist. I absolutely love strategy. But the truth is you have to feel it in your gut too. There needs to be this um, synergistic uh, decision making. You can't think it through. Sometimes you got to really feel it. How does it feel in your gut? And it's about dropping out of that headspace, right? 
into the heart space. Or you can look at, at, at it as, you know, the element of air or is the, 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 the realm of thoughts. And you drop it down into that emotional realm, which is the water realm. And that's within you, your gut, your heart, all this center. Bye, Lil. Bye, Lil. Lil's not interested. I'll tell you, she's a sassy little girl. I'm not sure she wants to feel anything with her heart. <laughs> That little Lil, she's like, later, you're talking about heart space? Bah. Um, but uh, I, I kid, I kid and I digress. So you really want to drop down your thoughts, quiet those thoughts and really feel, how does this decision feel to me? Right? That's strategy number two. Because when you're out of the air realm of the thinking space and into the feeling realm, you're activating that element of water and you are in that flow that element that flows, right? The element of water. So that's tip practice number two. So number three, don't take me the wrong way when I say this. Hear my heart when I say, mind your own business, ladies. Not your circus, not your monkeys. You ever hear about that? So many caring, kind women. The women that are in my community, oh my goodness, they just want to make sure everybody's okay, everybody's happy, everybody's all good in the world. Well, you know what? If you don't make yourself happy first, nobody will ever be happy because it all starts with you first. And a number, a number two that I've learned is you will never have everybody be happy at the same time. So if your happiness depends on everybody else's happiness or your peace of mind depends on everybody else's peace of mind in your life, just, just stop watching this right now because it's never going to work for you. You're going to be miserable and you're going to be stressed and you're going to be very unhappy. So mind your business. What's yours is yours. What everybody else's is everybody else's. How, ask me how I know this because I just cared so much about the happiness of my children, the happiness of my spouse, the happiness of my parents, the happiness of my clients, the happiness of the people I serve. I mean, Jesus, I could not win. Because you can't make everybody happy. You have to start with making yourself happy. So mind your own business. You know, again, if you're just joining me, not my circus, not my monkeys. The only thing you control is your response to something. And I say that response because so many women are in reaction. Reaction to everybody else's stuff. Reaction to their own stuff. You really want to be in a place where you're responding to life and really thinking about, listen, I'm, I'm a, I love my children as much as any other mama, but their life, their decisions is their life and their decisions. I give them my best guidance, my best advice, and then I let them go do what they're going to do. Do they sometimes make decisions that I don't think are in their best interest? Of course they do. But the thing is, that's it's not my life to live. It's theirs, and they have to live it. So there has to be a detachment. In order for you to experience peace, grace, and flow in your life, my darling, hear me, you have to detach from what is not yours, right? So next practice. Three is the magic number. I love the number three. If you've been in my world for a while, you've probably heard that three is my is my favorite number besides the number 13. I really, that's 13 is my favorite, favorite number, but three is the number I use for everything because three is a magical number and three is a nice, good number that it's not overwhelming and it's not too little. I love the number three. So what that means is don't fill your day up with a zillion things to do. There is no way you are going to experience peace, grace, and flow if you've jam-packed your day with the bajillion, very important, um, big things to do. Your day should be balanced with no more than three focused projects that you want to get done, and then the rest is kind of little menial stuff that could be put over to the next day. I am, and, and ask me how I know this, because I am an overachiever, I'm perfectionistic and I and I definitely my eyes are bigger than my stomach and I mean that it, when I eat and I mean that when I'm doing stuff I'm like I could do it all today. It's not possible. Life happens. So, I have a tool that I use and again, it's free. So, you can choose if you're entrepreneurial especially, I think you should have it. But I use this. I use this um daily project planner for my life and it helps me break down my you see three projects into 
smaller steps so I can get everything accomplished and whatever doesn't get accomplished moves over to the next day on the project planner because there's a to-do list ladies and then there's a projects right we have they're different things usually so especially for me in business I have projects I'm working on but even at home even if you're a domestic goddess and you're just like working in the house there's projects in the house you want to you know purge your closet you want to you know organize something you want to you know these are projects they shouldn't just be on the regular to-do list because we have stuff that moves our life forward we must do every day. So when we pile a ton of projects on top of our to-do, things don't get accomplished. We lose faith in our ability to really show up for ourselves and it kind of starts to spiral. We don't feel peace, grace, and flow. So no more than three. Don't add more to-do. And listen, if you get through your list, take some time to relax. How about that for an idea? Just like kick it back, totally do something decadent for yourself. And, and, and that is something that I learned later on in life. It's things I'm always working on to improve my life balance, to improve my level of happiness and, and grace and flow in my life. Because whenever I'd finish all my to-do list and my projects, I go to the next day or something like that. No, a new practice for me, and it's been working really great, is just being like, all right, I'm complete for today. What can I do that really feels juicy and wonderful? Refill the vessel. Refill the vessel. Don't keep pouring. Don't keep pouring because that is going to leave you very unhappy and feeling exhausted and really not ever replenishing what you're putting out into the world, right? Okay, next practice. Let work be work and play be play. Mm. This one was really rough for me too. That's why I talk about it. These are the stumbling blocks I had because I'm a multitasker because then I think I'm just so efficient and proficient in everything. But don't multitask. I have to, I catch myself often kind of multitasking. So, and, and one of the things when you're raising children, ladies, or you're in a relationship or marriage, I'm going to really encourage you to not ride two horses with one ass. So you don't want to be with your family, with your beloved, your, your partner, and then also on your phone, put it down, like have work hours, have play hours and have a good boundary. My work hours are my work hours, my play hours are my play hours. I'm getting better at that too. It's another little stumbling block as I, you know, having a lifestyle business, a lifestyle brand, you know, I got stuff going on all the time, all day. My, my life is my work type of thing because I have a lifestyle brand. But here's the thing. If you have a, a more kind of controlled business or you have a job, when you're done with work, be with your family at least because everybody feels honored then. You're honoring time with them. You're honoring your playtime. You're honoring your work time when you're there. The boundaries have to really be firm. That will absolutely bring you more grace and flow and peace if you just have proper boundaries around that. My next practice is call in some natural magic. So there's no lie that I totally believe in the power of Mama Earth to heal, to nourish. Uh, I believe in the power of the seasons and, and nature's rhythms to teach us and guide us to create our most our best and most healthy life. So take a look at ways you could be adding more plants into your life in the way of maybe drinking more tea, working with essential oils, working with herbs, uh, all these ways, like look to nature for more. And I find that the magic really, I don't know, ignites in your life when you start to really notice, you look through the world through those magical lenses, you start working with Mama Earth's um, bounty, right? With, with plants, it's amazing. And then also, like I mentioned, it kind, of, it kind of piggybacks off of the last point, ladies, but you know, if something doesn't resonate with you and you're having a really hard time integrating that practice or, or, you know, whatever it is, ritual or whatever you're trying to have it into your life. You know, there are so many ways up the mountain. So holistic approaches, there are so many that I've worked with so many women over the years. I can tell you 
100% that no one thing works for everybody. You know, you got to find that like really special combination of what works to you. And the only way to do that is to experiment, experiment with different practices, modalities. There's so many out there. You know, there's, there's all, all sorts of magical languages that I love to talk about and teach in my inner circle group, the Goddess Lifestyle Sisterhood. I try to expose my members to a, a little bit of everything so that they can curate their own magical practice, their own holistic practice, because I really feel that not there, there's definitely not a one size fits all. So, you know, definitely um, you could try things like um, yoga, massage, EFT, which is tapping, you know, divination, all different ways to get you more connected to your divinity, to, uh, you know, your higher self, your higher power. It's really the way. It's really the way. So I hope you enjoyed these tips. And I hope to see you next time live. Leave me your comments below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking and uh, what you thought about this and what you, th what you thought about my strategies to help support you have more peace, grace, and flow in your life. And until next time, I'll see you next Wednesday at 1. We're going to be playing around with the times maybe. And, but I, it's definitely going to be for a little bit. Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, you'll be seeing me here. Okay, darling? Oh, Fia, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. See, that's why Fia's a top fan. She lets me know what she's thinking about it. Thank you, my love. I appreciate you telling me. And again, if you know anyone who can use this, uh, this, this video, this class, share it with them. Share it, share it. Don't don't hoard the brownies. Share it. That's what this world should be. A lot of kind people doing kind things for each other. That's what I truly believe. And that's what I'm here to do. All right, my loves. I'll see you soon. Bye.